Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with Rack N. Uh, we have an exciting demo for you. This is our Terraform bare metal provisioning with digital rebar demo. So there's uh, <laughs> it's a lot to unpack. It's actually very simple. So if you're used to a HashiCorp product called Terraform, uh, it's used to create clusters uh, from a script, something they call plan, and you can create a plan that will provision bare metal using digital rebar's APIs. So uh, there's a prequel video for this that shows how I set this up and got it into this state. Um, and I suggest you watch that uh, after this. This is, ends up being pretty straightforward. Um, the system is, is already in a good working state. Um, what I've done is I've got three machines, the three packet machines over here. Uh, and you can do this with bare metal, packet, virtual box. Um, you do have to have the a IPMI plugin to make this work. In this case, we're using the Packet IPMI simulator, which uses packet a Packets APIs to simulate IPMI, power on, power off, reboot, recover. Um, and so if you look at one of the machines we have, you'll see it has power buttons, um, just like if it was a real machine with real IPMI enabled. Um, and they can do things like reboot the packet servers. Uh, and so what I've done here is I've got three machines. Uh, they are in Terraform ready. I'll show you what that means. Um, and in Terraform ready, that means I have uh, Terraform allocated false, Terraform managed true. That's what that Terraform ready stage does. It sets those, those flags. Managed means that it's available for a Terraform pool. And allocated means it hasn't been claimed by a Terraform plan execution. So it's truly a pool operation. Uh, the packet UUID is what happens when you use our packet uh, extensions, and uh, that allows the API, uh, the plugin, to access the packets API. And of course, GoHigh is our inventory uh, system. So I've got three machines; they're all ready to go. Uh, and what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit, and then I'm going to execute the plan. Uh, and so in this environment, I've already gone through and created a Sense 7 and a Ubuntu. Those are going to be my target operating systems. Uh, so those are I have stages that match that. So CentOS 7 is going to be our starting stage and Ubuntu. And what that looks like from a workflow perspective. So I built up this workflow uh, using our, our ad steps. We have some other videos that show you how to build workflows. Um, what's, what happened is, is that default, the system is going to go from discovered state to packet discover, uh, which sets the uh, UID, and then Terraform ready, which allows uh, sets those inventory flags I was just showing you. So this is the default new machines show up. They go through this process. Uh, for, for the Terraform demo, it's going to request a CentOS 7 or an Ubuntu. I'll show you where we set that. And it's going to add my SSH keys. Uh, this is for packet, but you could do this uh, any number of ways to set SSH keys to give us access to the boxes. Uh, it's not required for this. Uh, it just depends on what images you want to deploy. And then we're going to go straight to complete. Uh, there's a little bit fancier version of this that goes through a um, runner cycle and actually waits for the system to finish deploying. In this case, uh, we're going to return quickly from the system as soon as that operating system is installed instead of waiting for it to be complete. If you were going to do a CICD or some workflow where you didn't want Terraform to look like it had finished until the machine was completely up, you can add some steps for that. Um, we have um, steps that make the have the runner wait and then have um, a finished install step. And those allow uh, us to persist through multiple reboots. A little bit more complex than I want to do for this simple demo. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I don't have to touch anything. That's a big part to me of this demo. Um, in this case, I have three machines in the Terraform ready stage. Oh, one more thing to show you. Uh, what I have done is for my uh, package content, so this uh, digital rebar through Rack and UX allows you to upload content libraries. In this case, the content library uh, that we needed was Terraform and the task library. Uh, and then packet IPMI, that content actually comes through a plugin. So we have a plugin for the packet IPMI that lets us drive this out of band. All right, enough preamble or pre ramble, you might say, if you're not being generous tonight. Um, and so in, in this system, uh, this is where I've logged into Terraform. And I already have uh, my Terraform script here. 
and so it's pretty straightforward. I've got the uh, user and URL, so that needs to be embedded. So you could have different users uh, actually using this with different permission sets. And then I'm asking for a two Ubuntu, Ubuntu node cluster and um, screaming monkeys in the background. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm asking for it to start with this stage and then the workflow is going to advance it to complete. Terraform is waiting, starts you at one stage and then waits until you reach the complete stage. Uh, and so I'm asking for two machines that are Ubuntu, one that's CentOS. So it's a, it's a pretty basic cluster. I'm not doing any additional work on it. And with Terraform, you can combine different resources. So this is using the DRP resource, which I initialize. Uh, so I need to initialize that resource. So it's turned on the plugin. And then, uh, let's see, we're going to scroll off the bottom if I'm not careful. So we're going to Terraform. We're going to see what the plan is. So planning doesn't take any action, it just shows me what, the, what will happen. So we're going to build a three node cluster, one CentOS to Ubuntu, pretty straightforward there. And then, um, oops, and I'm moving things all over the place. And so here, what you will see is, um, I'll move it up a little bit more, uh, Terraform, uh, apply and that will actually start this process so it's building that plan I'm gonna slide over here a little bit so you can watch and uh, you'll notice if you were paying attention earlier my machine stages were both terraform ready so now it's building the cluster it's already gone through this is a live update view and it's building two machines that are in Ubuntu install and one that's in CentOS install um, if I jump over to my console viewer over here and attached to the machine. So this is already set up. This is pointing to the, one of the three machines in this cluster. And you'll actually watch it uh, go through the Pixie Boot process um, and actually you know, start that install process behind the scenes. It's exactly what's going on in this case. So I didn't take any action, right? Remember, the only thing I've, I've clicked here, besides changing menu items, is said Terraform apply and it is communicating it's asking for the new stages it's driving the workflows through to completion um, and this is exactly the behavior you want digital rebar is just acting like an infrastructure as a service api and starting from one state moving to another yay the purple uh, ubuntu screen you could say hey rob that looks familiar yes this is an ubuntu desktop um, i am a linux on the desktop person um, I know you thought I'd say something different, a person. Um, and so we're moving through on that. And that's that's pretty much the demo. At this point, it's just going to work and, and do its job through uh, various, various actions here as we wait for the install to complete. Um, if something goes wrong, I can come back into this bulk actions view. Um, I could pick the machines. I could drive them back into discovery and then uh, reboot and that would reset the machines for me. Um, of course, I don't want to mess with this right now. It's, it's happily going through its, its process. Um, bulk actions are super, super handy. And then inside of the plans, I can do things like set additional filters, criteria, I can set parameters. That would allow me to say, you know, these are Rob's machines or this is a CI process. So I could stamp in the job that was being, that initiated this and drive those back into machine data over here so they could be part of my filter criteria or manage however I want to see it. Um, and you can do the same thing. You can look at the event view and, and watch um, what, what requests are being made on behalf of different machines. And then if I wanted to, I could look at the jobs here and actually see what stages are going on and what, what the tasks are. So every one of these tasks, uh, Boy, we do a lot, quite a bit of logging off the jobs. So every task that happens, we're going to pull back job data. Um, you can see exactly what's going on. And then you can walk a graph of what the different jobs are and see um, what transactions are um, encountering. So we, we do a lot of logging uh, in the system to help you, you know, manage very transparently uh, the actions that are occurring from a, from a, um, you know, provisioning infrastructure automation perspective. It's, you know, transparency is a really important point for us. 
Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, system's going to go through, and we have to wait for the machines to provision. Uh, there's just no shortcut for that. Unfortunately, it takes the time it takes. Um, one other thing to note with this is this is showing a traditional Pixie Kickstart Preseed type install OS uh, where we're just doing normal provisioning. Um, one of the things we've done for customers is we've actually done this using direct images. So if you have like a Packer image or a DD disk image, uh, instead of taking it through a normal process, we can go from dis our discovery sledgehammer image straight to DD to disk to booting the machine and then turning it over. So uh, from that perspective, you can get you know really improved performance and also a very cloud-like uh, CI/CD create an image, test an image, deploy an image. Uh, process. So that's that's super exciting. At this point, I'm really just stalling for time, so I'm going to pause the video uh, and come back after this has been complete. And so we're back. Um, I took a walk, so I don't know exactly how long this took. Oh, wait, it tells us 11 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, but basically, we're, we're done. We're complete. Everything's green. Machines are handed off. Uh, if I check one of them, You'll see allocated, true, all that's good. Uh, and that's that's pretty much the Terraform demo. Uh, of course, I do want to clean up after myself. So Terraform, destroy. We'll do the opposite. I'm going to move over here a little bit so you can watch how fast things go. Uh, I have to say yes, I do want to destroy. The node gets torn down. I've already switched in the background over here. Nodes are destroyed and released. And they're going back through the discover sledgehammer process. So if you look at our workflow, uh, they got reset back to discover, and they're going to go through this sequence back to Terraform ready. They're not Terraform ready yet. They've got to get rebuilt. So over here, that machine uh, is going in. Just went into a system reboot. Um, Right, so now it's actually forcibly being rebooted behind the scenes and it's going back through a, a boot discover uh, phase and you could do burn in, decommissioning, resets, whatever was necessary based on your workflow. In this case, just a super simple workflow. Um, if you have questions about this, check out Digital Rebar, scroll down, follow the steps. I do have a prequel video that shows exactly how I got into this, this st state. It took about 20 minutes from nothing all the way through. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, contact us to get uh, the Terraform provider beta. Right now, it's a Rackn um, managed provider, but we are working with Ter with HashiCorp to get it into the community in their uh, commercial program. So, uh, this is something that that will be a community provider uh, and available generally. Right now, we're we're working with people to make sure, um, you know that everything's going according to plan. We're not trying to withhold it or, you know, charge you a fortune for it. It's, it's just a management aspect. And um, you can see everything's going on in the background. Um, one of my nodes is already recovered back already. So pretty cool stuff. Um, super powerful. We're really excited about what Terraform can provide um, and how Digital Rebar brings those cloud type uh, management capabilities directly to Metal to let you really manage your infrastructure in a continuous, seamless way. Thanks a lot. This is Rob Hirschfeld. Have a good day.